I hope you're seeing this video and not the one I just did, which was a test. I'm having so many crazy things happen as if spirit is just telling me I wasn't supposed to do this particular video. Um, and ironically, I'm reading you a homily today, a homily, not hummus or anything like that. I'm reading you a homily today that I delivered at the Lancaster Metaphysical Chapel in Lancaster City um, that is called Divine Synchronicity. So maybe that's not a coincidence. But um, I wanted to share this with you because it's really kind of dear to my heart. And I'm a little gussied up, not for you today, sorry. Not that I wouldn't, but uh, I am speaking at the Lancaster um, Metaphysical Chapel. Actually, it's an event. I'm gonna be doing a gallery with a couple other mediums and uh, we have a lot of fun when we do that. In any case, um, if you are local to Lancaster County, PA, um, hop on to LancasterChapel.org um, and you'll get some more information about the, about the chapel. Um, also, if you like this homily, please don't hesitate to say so below. Hit the like button and also subscribe. Uh, would love to see you back here again. Uh, I do more of my cancer videos than I do the spirituality, but sometimes I think I'm doing the spirituality of cancer um, because one can just throw you into the other. Not the other way around. Usually it's the, uh, the cancer that throws you into the spirituality. Anyway, without all my corniness, my further ado, uh, divine synchronicity. The first thing I want to share is that um, the word coincide is the root word for coincidence and Wayne Dyer wrote in mathematics two angles that are said to coincide fit together perfectly the word coincidence does not describe luck or mistakes it describes that which fits perfectly so I want to tell you first about a video I saw online a few years ago it shows two men in a kayak and they were on the ocean filming something in the distance and after a time, you could see the kayak was, um, was crossing paths with a sea turtle. And one man was filming as the other one plucked the turtle out of the water. And I have to admit, I was rather annoyed at that at first. But then you could see the, ne the netting that was wrapped around its neck and that he was dragging the rest of it behind him. So the man put the distressed turtle on his lap. And of course, his arms and legs are flailing around, um, trying to get away. And, uh, but then the man pulled out a knife and was examining the netting. And the turtle calmed down and realized that this was a friend and not a foe. And as you can imagine the ending, the turtle gets a big kiss on the head and gets lowered back into the water. And it turned out to be one of those heroic, feel-good stories we don't really get to see often enough. And I was so moved by this video that I really, it really gave me cause to consider the circumstances and the odds that in this vast body of water, these beings intersected, one in trouble and the other one with a solution. The men in the kayak had just the right tool to help out a weary traveler, right? Coincidence, she said with a smirk. Now, I mean, yes, it is coincidence, but it, I believe the be behind that coincidence is the divine power. And I believe that most of you know that too. Whoever you call God, wherever your God lives, um, along with his spirit helpers, God knows that we all need help once in a while. And after considering the odds of this incredible event, I pondered on the turtle's life purpose. I wondered if he knew the influence he, he would end up having. After all, why would we think that animal consciousness is more limited than our own? Many animals, I believe, know more than we do. I mean, you think about it, it's probably because they don't clutter their minds up. They don't worry about paying bills. They worry about you being nourished. Um, it's probably about it, otherwise they play, right? And, and maybe procreating. But, I, but basically, it's just simple innocence. 
Um, but back to the turtle. Was it his mission to get caught up in that net? Aside from synchronicity on the ocean rescue, the universe made sure there was a knife, a cell phone to video, um, inspiration for someone to film it and to post it up on um, social media. Did that turtle know that thousands of people would watch its rescue? That it would affect so many people? And what about his, his fame going offline as well? I mean, someone would talk about it in church, right? Um, we talk about big things starting as ripples, little ripples in the ocean. This was pretty literal. And I'm sure the video got many joyful reactions. It aids in awareness about the dangers humans often caught cause to nature and perhaps it caught the eyes of a fisherman or uh, a child that needed to learn compassion and uh, and respect and still for others the takeaway was the gratitude for the men in the kayak for their not so random act of kindness um, I mean they did have a choice right uh, here's another takeaway the divine force can get you where you need to be at the right time, at the right place, at the right moment. But it's your own inner connection that propels you to do the right thing. Innately, we're all good and we want to do good things. But human nature sometimes interferes with the divine uh, plan because in the material world, we also have the ego to contend with. The ego has a voice. It wants it desires, and it has an agenda all its own. People get conflicted when doing the right thing means sacrificing something personal. And we often re neglect what's important when it doesn't fit our own agendas. That's pretty sad. And really good people tend to do that too. It's just not just, you know, just people that are mean or don't care. And, and we, no matter where we are in life and no matter how busy we are living it, once in a while we have to stop and ask, what is the universe asking of me right now? And no matter what the situation, getting the answers actually require us to plug in to the one consciousness that we all belong to. One of the seven principles we live by is called the law of unity. That is love without limits. When we plug into that, we don't hear the ego's voice anymore. It's muted because the ego only lives in this dual world. So in other words, when we drop the human coat and we go to the other side, we're not taking that with us. So when we in tune into who we really are, we don't put careers or other goals up front. They mean nothing in the grand scheme, nothing. We'll just do the right thing over and over and over again because that's who we really are underneath it all. If we make any other choice, then we didn't plug in. We let the ego take over and make the choice for us. The ego operates on fear. It just wants to survive. But the soul operates on love because the soul is who we truly are. Like you, my life will be measured by what I did in those specifically designed moments that spirit brought to me. Did I plug in and act on love or did I let the ego take over and make mistakes? Everybody, everybody makes those mistakes, but if you do more good deeds than make poor choices, well, you're ahead of the game. It is true, nobody's perfect. But we're here to practice and grow. And we're supposed to get it right eventually, I, I suppose. But in order to do that, mistakes will happen. And life will get interrupted many, many times over. And no matter how carefully you design your life, you cannot know how that design will be affected by one single event, one single moment. Life changes in an instant. 
One small change, one detail, changes everything. God may have a different plan for us, perhaps a better plan. No matter how many things go wrong, don't let the feelings of defeat get embedded in your head. That's the ego. God's plan is already in motion. Think about that turtle in the water and how he struggled dragging that big fishing net behind him. He could have given up, but he had the will to keep going. God had a plan for him. God had a plan for those men in the kayak. God has a plan for you and God has a plan for me. Sometimes in life, things happen and we don't even understand why they happen. It could be called retro causality. And let me explain that. It means that something that is happening in your current life or in the past, a situation, it, it's going to relate to something in the future. So you ever have that moment where you go, what just happened? What was that? <laughs> you know, um, and this might be a relationship, a learning experience or an inc incident that you have to experience because it's going to relate to something in your future and something to come. We all have those moments of hindsight. Do you know what I mean? Like, oh, I couldn't have done this if I hadn't have done that. So everyone's life will touch the lives of others just as it's meant to be. We grow from our connections and change course because of them. Between intersections, we have free will. And even free will, though, is subject to um, divine intervention. Sometimes we're just influenced by what God wants us to do. And it could come in the form of a phrase out of someone else's mouth. It could come just a thought that popped up. Um, and it's funny how you think about those things where you're a fork, you've got a fork in the road and you've decided to take the left fork and you're like, oh, it's a good thing I did that, right? But that's probably another homily, which we might do another time. So when the intersection of fate comes though, it comes. I mean, it doesn't matter what you're in the middle of. Um, every connection we make along the way is important to our journey. And even the subtle meetings that we think nothing of at the time. Here's an example of retro causality. Alex and Donna were looking through some of Donna's old photos when she was a child. And they came across one of her at Disney World. And Donna was in the photo with her family standing in front of a Disney character. You know, pretty typical. Um, and as she was sharing this childhood memory with Alex, he spotted something in the background. Very interesting. It was his own father. Yeah, his own father. And his dad was in the background pushing a stroller. And guess who was in that stroller? That was Alex. And obviously it was more than a remarkable coincidence because these families didn't even know each other, you know? I mean, they didn't even live in the same country at the time. So perhaps Spirit just wanted them to realize that they were fated to be together, you know, just a, a little validation. And uh, it was realized. That's, that's a wonderful story. So everything, past, present, future, is linked together in a quantum design, a perfect quantum design. And all of our experiences are written into a database in the universe. Um, some people call it the Akashic Records. Uh, it's also called the library, basically where they're held. So you have access to that, or at least your soul has access to it. Um, the ego is probably why we don't access it though. <laughs> but all that knowledge is in, in their past, present, and future. And we already know that we're linked together connected by an infinite force, an unbreakable bond. There's no separation between you and or, or any one or anything, not here, not on the other side. Let me share one last story about a client of mine. The last time I had seen her, she was completely lost. Her dad, Bob, passed away and uh, they were incredibly close. So she shared with me what had happened the same day she left my office a few years ago. 
She had gone to Bob's house and sat in his home office just to feel close to him. The room was filled with books and paperwork and there behind the leather chair she was sitting at was a table where she describes the stack of papers to, to be about 50 reams. That's a lot of papers balancing, but you know, I, I don't know, but she said that the whole thing, just as she was thinking, just, just fell over, some of it right on her head. She described it like this, one paper broke away from the pack and just swirled down like a feather and flew over her head and swirled down and landed right on a desk in front of her. So this turns out to be a handwritten letter from her father to a friend of his, and it had never been mailed, obviously. In the letter, Bob expressed his heartfelt condolences to his friend on the recent loss of his father. And Bob went on to describe how, in detail, how incredibly hard it was to lose his own dad. He understood what she was going through, but this was retrocausality because of something that he did and never mailed, and there was a reason to never mail it. And, and why didn't he mail it? Because consciously he didn't know he was leaving it for his daughter. So Spirit just has a way of making things happen that perhaps he gets interrupted with a phone call and it just never materializes and they make him just have amnesia. I'm not sure how that works. But when you stay plugged in, you know nothing can separate us. And that's the point. Bob was not separated from his daughter, not in that way. The journey continues and on it goes on and on. Life is like a dance. So make the plans, manifest your goals, but don't let the ego have a bigger voice than your soul. Because there's lots of other things going on besides this material world. And, this, and the things that are going on can help you in this material world. So pay attention to the divine synchronicity and accept that life will be interrupted. It gets frustrating, I know this. But if we plug in and ask the universe what it's asking of us at the moment, we'll always be guided to the answers. Even if it wasn't the direction we planned on going, just hold trust and faith in your heart. God has a plan for all of us. Thank you very much for listening. I hope you made it to the end. <laughs> and like and subscribe i would really appreciate it and leave a comment below tell me if you if you have a story of divine synchronicity i would love to hear it um or just say hi okay you have a wonderful day morning afternoon nighttime whatever it is you're doing um i appreciate your being here feel blessed because you are blessed i feel blessed bye